This is it, the final episode. This is where our story ends. With the fourth artifact found, the collector directs us towards the last stop in our adventure, Devil's Spine. I spent some time building a rainy day fund and completing an order for the fishmonger from 50 days earlier before heading northeast, avoiding some wind and a stingray along the way. I forgot to mention that before I left the Marrows, I stopped in on our old pal the dock worker and, um, not great. Devil's Spine was everything its name suggests. Its ruins and narrow corridors made navigation there hellish, which the mist that always hung in the air only amplified. Thankfully by now I had enough experience for such dangers. My first stop in this tomb was another psychic rock that resolved any skepticism I had about the dangers of this area. I then visited an ancient lighthouse and found what looked like a slot for a stone tablet. One crack in warning rock and sacrificial shrine later and I finally found the traveling merchant. I blew out my engine on the way to the ancient temple on day 60 and had to row the remaining length. At the temple, I found a completely reasonable man who mistook me for the Herald of the Purge. The fanatic explained that as Herald, my duties were to find and ignite three fathomless flames, which shrines like the one from earlier would guide me to. The state of my engine meant this would have to wait though, at least for the moment. Back in the Marrows, I repaired my ship and completed two more orders for the fishmonger, one for some crab and the other a deformed fish. The second of these two leaving the fishmonger in a somewhat erratic mood. I then spent a day and a half bouncing between the Marrows and Gale Cliffs to earn some money for reasons I can't remember. It was now time to return to Devil's Spine. Do you want the banished before I go? Just because I'm certain I'm going to get attacked anyways. This time, I was happy to be wrong, and all that roamed the stretch of open sea were some ravens. Because I'd need crabs for at least one of the puzzles, my first order of business in Devil's Spine was to buy and place some crab pots. The next two days then became a combination of fishing and trapping, all while maneuvering the dangers of Devil's Spine. Oh shit! Let me explain. Unlike the other POIs I'd visited where one local sea monster challenged me, Devil's Spine had two complementary threats. First, there were piranhas. These guys guarded important areas around the spine, pursuing my ship whenever I ventured too close. If they caught up to me, my ship would lose a percentage of its speed that would increase depending on how many surrounded me, something I escaped by hovering over one of the many volcanic springs. The piranhas themselves aren't dangerous, but rather act as alarms for the all-seeing mother, a giant but blind piranha that patrols Devil's Spine. She is very much dangerous. There was also giant tentacles waiting to slap me silly too if I let my guard down. <gasps> the close quartered ruins in Devil's Spine then are about methodical planning more than anything. Move between springs and know your exits. By day 65, the first part of this planning paid off. I sacrificed a squat lobster and spider crab to the first shrine and received my first fathomless flame. One down, two more to go. I caught some pale skate and ghost shark the following day to complete the second shrine, as well as some frilled shark and cusk eel. I also found the third and final shrine during these days. This shrine didn't call for any particular fish at all, but rather some combination of them. Probably because I don't read instructions that well, I spent the next five days fishing for the perfect combination of fish and devil's spine, and yes, even the marrows, to fill this shrine. Until I eventually realized that you just need two aberrations. That's embarrassing. You just needed to put two on? With the last fathomless flame collected, the time had come to return to the ancient temple. I lit the three crucibles before the fanatic took me up to the top of the shrine where we performed a ritual together. Really, I just watched the man get teleported into another dimension. I think. Thankfully, he left behind that pocket watch I needed, concluding my business in Devil's Spine. I manifested back to Blackstone Isle and gave the fifth and final artifact to the Collector. The Collector then told me it was time for one last voyage, marking a spot in the open ocean west of the Marrows on my map. West it is. We arrived at the spot just before 4 in the morning on day 72, and it was time for another ritual, making the purpose of my work over the past 72 days clear. The Collector summoned each of the artifacts and threw them overboard between chants from his book. Oh, it's some kind of ritual. He then concluded by putting the key in the music box, 
but left it unturned before sending it plunging into the ocean. An act that made what happened next all the more disturbing. It was only after this moment of confusion that I realized, as Greater Marrow burned, that I had been duped into bringing about the end of the world. Wait, this is no way to end a series. The world burning under the thumb of some summoned deity? Plus, there were still plenty of fish I hadn't even caught. And what about all those side quests? The woman in Ingfell was still winning on rotting fucking Chondrial. And day 72? Who ends a series on day 72? Let's try this again. We left a lot of unfinished business in this game and... What? What did I hit? First task on my quest to 100% completion was the Shrouded Figures quest. Around the map, there are four robed figures. One blue, one yellow, one red, and one purple. Finding these jokers begins a time quest that asks the player to find and return three specified fish to each robed figure before they starve. Successfully doing so earns the player a book as a reward. Since I was trying to complete the game by day 100, Google was my trusty friend for this effort. I gave myself until day 85 to get this done. Let's get to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to crank out the max completion of this game. This should be the first hooded figure right here. Blue mackerel. Should be mackerel right here, actually. Tiger mackerel's in Gale Cliffs. Okay. With this catch, Snake Mackerel was all that remained on his list, making it time for a trip to Devil's Spine. Okay, okay. Well, shit. And by day 74, I had the first leg of this four part race done. During this time, I earned money and recovered materials to upgrade my ship, reaching a tier 3 hull by day 73. I also began the process of ditching the 52.5 speed twin jet drive engine for several 9.5 speed jet drive engines, but the payoff for this move would take a little longer. I might have to buy another rinky dink engine for the minute, man. This is way too slow. This unintentional detour put my ship above 75 speed for the first time this playthrough. The time had come to visit the yellow hooded stranger, and a trip to Google told me that Red Snapper, Fangtooth, and Blue Crab were on his menu. I also crossed paths with the old mare in this part. Besides shouting his usual plea to throw it back, he told me to visit the lighthouse keeper, who knew where it came from and belonged. The red freeloader's menu proved the most difficult. For it, he asked for a sailfish, a frilled shark, and a cusk eel. By day 80, all was going well. I had just caught the Cuskeel and manifested back to the Marrows, expecting to catch a sailfish along my way to K2 when a flock of ravens plucked it from my cargo. Oh, f off, dude. Oh, man. Another trip to Devil's Spine and a Cuskeel later, and I was headed to K2 fishing for a sailfish and crossing paths with an old friend along the way. With just over two days left before my day 85 goal, 
I raced between Stellar Basin and Twisted Strands to catch a barrel eye, tarpon, sure. and horseshoe crab for the purple robed stranger, okay. meeting my mark with some time to spare. Okay, so now what we're going to do is at the beginning pretty much of this playthrough when we went to Gale Cliffs, the traveling merchant that we've seen on all the major POIs around this world, she asked for four fish. Um, so now we're going to get all four of those fish. The first stop for this task was Gale Cliffs. This should be, what is this, northeast, I believe? Completely wrong. North, southeast. And of course, we'll look for anything we see on the way. We might also just start buying crab pots and dropping them places. Um, just because that's going to help us get our completion of all the fish. Look at that mission. Way back, that woman asked us to get that gross rotting eel. Rotting conjure eel. Maybe we'll see that inside. We can pick that up. We should have banished prepared right now, but I'm just banking on us hearing the sea snake. Oh, there he was. That fucker. And we got him. Oh, why? With the oarfish and conjurel on deck, all quest-related business in Gale Cliffs came to a close. And a quick trip to Twisted Strands for the Goliath Tigerfish and Stellar Basin for the Gulper Eel completed the Recording Rarities Pursuit. You may be thinking, I thought there were four rare fish, and you'd be correct. Turns out I had caught the coelacanth by fluke in Devil's Spine on day 67. The hell? The completion of the recording rarities pursuit meant it was time to fulfill a promise I made to the former airman over 30 days ago. I spent all of day 89 recovering three dog tags from around Twisted Strands, sharing a sigh of relief with the former airman when it was all said and done. I also used the parts gathered from this in the recording rarities pursuit to finish researching crab pots. The stone tablet pursuit was my next task. For three long days, I searched Devil's Spine for the last stone fragment, finally finding it on day 92. I then spent day 93 returning the three fragments to the trader, who pieced it together into one stone tablet, which I used to open the door of the ancient lighthouse. This effort netted me with the flame of the sky, the brightest light available in Dredge. I spent the next nine days searching for fish species and finding materials for ship upgrades, slowly coming to terms with the fact that I wasn't going to make my 100 day mark. Still, by day 102, I had reached a tier four hull and had 10 jet drive engines six days later for a combined speed of 95 clicks. Ooh, baby, it's an extra 20 kilometers. Oh, we are flying. Very nice. The next 30 odd days involved racing around the map, completing five fish shrines, one in each major POI, visiting all remaining unexplored docks, of which there were three, and rescuing a castaway from an island between the Marrows and Gale Cliffs, completing the last remaining pursuit. During this time, I continued upgrading my ship and spending research parts, completing both. Engines are complete. I also finished the fish encyclopedia, but since this involved probably over 80 catches, I'll just show a mini highlight reel. First in anglerfish, that's so sick. That is obviously a reference to um, alien. But those crabs, man, those are going to be tricky to get. Speaking of crabs. That is fucking freaky. How sick would it be if we just pulled in and found that right now? Oh, let's go. Complete. Crap pot, crap pot, crap pot, crap pot. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and finish it right now. This is a monumental moment. So let's take a second. 150 out of 151 discovered. That's Everything from the Marrows, Gale Cliffs, Stellar Basin, Twisted Strand, Devil's Spine, 
in most of the open ocean with the exception of the ever elusive scarlet prawn what do you think ladies and gentlemen <gasps> with everything now completed i returned to the marrows early in the morning of day 135 remembering the old mayor's pleas i made the lighthouse keeper my first stop the Crimson Book was the subject of my inquiries. In response, the lighthouse keeper told me that I needed to move on for mine and her sake, telling me to be rid of the book once and for all. But how could this be? The Crimson Book was the collector's possession, not mine. A need for an answer to this question brought me back to Blackstone Isle, and inevitably, the collector. The collector mocked me for my question's hypocrisy, telling me that I begged to forget that the book was ours. I would not be deterred. I approached him as he berated me, striking out at him with my fist. But instead of flesh, my fist met glass, and what remained shook me to my core. I was the collector, the architect of aberration, an agent for the occult, and the harbinger of doomsday. I couldn't bear it any longer. I raced back to the lighthouse keeper, free from the illusion that I could bring her back. It was time to let what I couldn't change rest, and to throw back what wasn't mine to decide. The lighthouse keeper agreed to help, vouching to guide me to the spot where it all happened many years ago. There was no time to waste. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an amazing run. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the continued support. If you haven't subscribed, please do. This has been a lot of work, but it's been very rewarding, and I appreciate you guys. I want to continue bringing you gameplay videos like this and uh i really just want to see this channel grow so i can do what i love and hopefully bring some joy to you guys nothing more to say take care thank you for tuning in love you guys Watt out